This is one of a series of videos covering some of the theory that you need to take the AQA GCSE computer science exam. It will also cover some programming theory later on in some videos. But for the moment, I'm going to talk about HTML and how web applications are built. So, looking at the um, AQA objectives, you need to understand some basic web application concepts. So, we're going to look at the concept of coding at the client and server end. We need to know what can be coded at each side, each end. And you will eventually get some experience of actually writing this code. But today we'll talk about what happens where. So this is a very basic um, web application. So this is just for static HTML pages. By this, I mean pages that don't do anything. They just have plain HTML, plain text with some basic formatting. They don't do anything special. There's no programming involved. It's just display information. So imagine you're download or you're going to view a web page. Say um, it's some very simple um, HTML about perhaps your favourite band. So somebody's written this HTML in a an HTML editor or by hand, or it's been generated by something, and it's stored on a server. So your web browser which is something like Chrome or Internet Explorer or Firefox or Safari. Your web browser is where you type in your URL, your web address. Now, the browser uses that web address to go using methods on the internet that we don't need to go into now. So it will go to the server that will provide the information for that address. The server will have some internal rules about where to get its files from for the particular address. It will go and get its files from that and it will send them back to the browser who will display them. So the server's not doing anything clever apart from sending back a file. It's not doing any calculations, it's not talking to anything else, it's just fetching a file and sending it back. Web applications are more complicated than that. So there are two sides to a web application. The client side, which is what happens on your local machine, on your web client, which will be a web browser normally. And the server side is the things that happen on the machine that is hosting the website. So, for example, you're going to the BBC website. You type in an address, a URL. The um, browser finds or sends the information, sends that request to the web server, which will do some work. It might be some PHP, it might be another language, it might be a static HTML page again, but whatever it is, the web server deals with that, the web server talks to any other servers that it needs to talk to, and then it sends the information back to the browser. Now the browser understands only a few things. So it understands HTML, it understands some what's called CSS, cascading style sheets, which we will look at briefly, and it understands um, JavaScript, which is a client-side scripting language. We are not going to be using or looking at JavaScript um, at all, really, but you need to be aware that there are certain things that you may want to do that you would need to use JavaScript for, so things that are happening on the client-side. We will look at what happens here 
in a bit more detail at another point. So looking at the different parts of this, we're looking at what's happening here on the client side at the moment. So the HTML that gets sent around, gets sent back from the web server. And this is hypertext markup language. Now, what does it what does it mean by this? Well, hypertext is a load of linked up text. So um, it uses links between parts of documents and other documents to give it structure. Markup means that you add extra information to uh, the basic text. So we, we take the basic text that has the meaning that gives us the content and we add some markup, which are tags that we're going to look at in a minute, some markup that shows us what um, what that text needs to look like or maybe what its structure is. Um, and that markup, that extra information comes in the form of tags. So these tags come in pairs normally and they explain the document structure. So um, what different parts of the um, document are like the header, um, some special information like um, displaying the title in the top bar of the browser and things like that. And it also shows things like the visual display, when the new paragraph is starting, whether you're, um, whether it's appearing in a table or a list, various other organisational things. And these tags can be used to show links and images too, which we will look at later. So these tags, they come in pairs, most of them. There are some exceptions to this and there are some things that will work without its closing tag, but it's sensible to use one anyway. So the opening tags have just the word of the tag, the name of the tag and angle brackets on either side. So what's essentially a less than sign and a greater than sign on either side of the tag. You will often see the HTML written in uppercase in capitals but it doesn't have to be there is no rules there are no rules about it but it can often help to have the html tags in capitals so that you can see them nice and easily and clearly now the tag that you'll see in every document is the opening and closing html tags so those should be at the right at the top and right at the bottom of each document they say my document starts here, my document ends here with this closing tag. Okay, so this is a typical HTML document shown in Notepad++. So it shows us the basic structure. So the HTML starts with this HTML tag. And then we have a special tag called the head tag. So this is where we put information about the page. So um, it's where we can include the CSS later and it's where we set the page title. So the um, information between these tags appears in the top of the browser bar. So non displaying information will often go in the head tag. Um, some things do display, but the main body, the main content of the page will actually be between these two body tags. So the opening tag and the closing tag. So those show us the main area of the page. We can also have um, some tags that will change how things look. So these H1 tags give you the largest possible heading for your document, your HTML page. And you can have other levels of headings, H2s, H3s, and so on. And you can also have paragraphs. So that will give us a new line. We end it with a slash P. 
and we end our body and our HTML tags. Um, it's worth noting here that even though my file has got some new lines in, the web browser isn't going to show those new lines. It will automatically put the H1 and the H2 on their own line, and it will put the P, the paragraph, on the new, the new line. But even though there is um, a line ending there, the browser won't show that. It will just put it in a nice, neat paragraph and not reflect the, the new lines in the document. The next stage, which also happens on the client side, so going back to this example, there we have CSS on the client side. So that's the information is sent back to the browser and the browser understands about CSS. This defines more clearly how the HTML looks. So it will tell you um, what font to use, what colour, what spacing, all sorts of things about the layout. And you can swap different style sheets around with the same HTML file to give different looks. Um, so the HTML file should contain information um, about the essential structure of the document, but the formatting of that is shown in the style sheet. Um, as the slide says, like font, colour, size, whether it's left, right or centre aligned, and this is much, much more efficient than the old way of setting the properties of each tag. So you used to say, well, this is a paragraph tag and I want it to be left aligned and I want the font to be blue and so on and so on. Um, if you wanted to make changes, you had to make changes in a lot of places and it was very complicated. So using a style sheet is very sensible. Okay, here's a very simple cascading style sheet example. So you can either have a separate CSS file or you can include it within the head of the document. So if it's in the head, it goes in between two style tags, an opening and a closing style tag. And then we can say what we want to do with a particular type of tag. So this says for all P's, for all paragraphs, I'm going to align them to the left and I'm going to set the text colour to red. Okay, so when I do that, the result is shown on the right hand side. Every paragraph is red and left aligned. By just changing a tiny bit in the CSS, we can change that. So now every paragraph tag is centre aligned and blue font, blue text. So we don't have to change the code down here, the markup down here. We can just change it once in the header. OK, we're moving over to the server side now. So server side languages like PHP run, obviously, on the server side. So the page address is requested from the server. And if it's a PHP page, the server will run the PHP and send it back to the web browser to view. So it runs it, it gets any results, it puts it into um, some HTML and sends that HTML back to the server. So it uses some familiar concepts for you. So if you've used App Inventor, uh, you should recognize variables, loops, and lists when we get to them, as well as other things. Um, PHP can be mixed in with HTML. So any code, any PHP code is in between these two special tags. So we can see the familiar angle bracket, but our PHP code starts with a question mark and the letters PHP and ends with a question mark and the angle bracket. So anything out there, 
uh, outside of that will just be sent back of HTML for the um, browser to view. Anything in that is executed, it's run. So here, it just prints out the words hello world and adds that to the HTML that's sent back. Okay, you will come across, if you're using um, any online help guides and things like that, you will come across different versions of HTML. HTML5 is what we should be working towards. Um, and all formatting, pretty much, is done through the CSS. Now, if you start like that, it's fairly easy to get used to it. But you may see HTML4 around, which might have some formatting information inside the tags. I wouldn't recommend using that style, but it can be easier to do things like that. So. Uh, and it's still understood by browsers, so you need to make up your mind which you're going to use. If you want to do any development at home, I would recommend um, setting up a XAMPP server. You can install it onto a memory stick, if at which you can run on computers that you don't have install access to, like administrator access. Um, you can do HTML and CSS just using any text editor and your web browser. So you don't need a special server for that. For PHP, you do need the XAMPP server. So as I said, you can install it onto a memory stick and use it anywhere, or you can install it onto your own computer and run it from there. Uh, there's loads of online help documents. There will be some links on Moodles to help. Um, but you will not be allowed to do your controlled assessment work at home. However, it might be nice to have um, a server set up so that you can practice some of your techniques and do some extra work um, to help you understand the code.